hello my dear grade 8 students so now we are about to discuss the seventh unit in your grade 8 science syllabus so the seventh unit is all about electricity right so here we are learning about measurements associated with the electricity so let's move on to discuss what are the things contained in this lesson right okay so first of all we'll be studying about electric circuits right so let's first of all see like what kind of a thing is this electricity right you know that in our earlier grades we studied things in our environment can be divided into two main categories as energies and matter we can divide any kind of a thing in our environment into two main categories right as energies or else matter so you know that matter are the things that has a mass and which occupy space in the fourth lesson i think you have studied about these things about the matter right so what kind of a thing is called an energy so energy is a type of a thing that do not occupy space and without a mass energies do not have any kind of a mass and it's not going to occupy any kind of a space in the environment you know that when sunlight is going to fall to our earth sunlight is it, sunlight is not occupying any kind of a space right don't need any space sunlight don't need any space right and no matter how much hard the sunlight is going to fall to our earth or to you guys right you won't feel any kind of a mass like you won't feel heavy it's because sunlight do not have any kind of a mass either so sunlight if you take light for an example it doesn't have a mass and it doesn't occupy any space so electricity here we are discussing about electricity now so if you take electricity right so if you take this electricity electricity is also a type of an energy like light sound heat and so on right so electricity is also type of an energy okay so you know that if it is an energy it's not going to occupy any space and it doesn't have any kind of a mass so first of all and first and foremost we'll be studying about electric circuit what do you mean by an electric circuit what kind of a thing is called as an electric circuit so you know that there are several electric circuits around that's even right if you take this screen this digital screen it also contains several types of electric circuits within the system if you take your computers your mobile phones whatever an electric component or electric equipment those sort of things contain electric circuits so we'll be get to we'll be getting knowing what do you mean by or what kind of a thing is called as an electric circuit first okay so you know that in the earlier grades like in grade 6 and 7 you studied electricity means here there are like electrical charges which are flowing from one place to another in simple we can say that electricity is flow of charge from one place to another due to these charges electrical equipments are getting worked out right so what is this electrical charges means actually it means a flow of electrical charges means it's an electrical current flow of electrical charges is referred as an electrical current so in the second step we'll be studying about what do you mean by an electric current how to measure electric current what kind of an instrument that we use to measure electric current right 
so those things will be con uh, will be discussed in the second step okay so the third one third step or the third main chapter so third main chapter is all about the potential difference or it's also referred as the voltage potential difference or the voltage so actually if you take electrical current or the charges which are going to flow from one place to another through a circuit these charges flow because of the potential difference or else the voltage right so we'll be discussing what kind of a thing is called as the voltage or the potential difference in our third step right then finally we'll be studying about the resistance electrical resistance so these are the things that we are about to learn within this lesson okay electrical circuits what are electric what is called as electric current then what is called as potential difference or the voltage and finally about the resistance and we'll be discussing some several questions so that you can get a good sound knowledge about the electricity lesson at the end right so let's move on with our first and foremost chapter my dear children so we are going to discuss about what is called as an electric circuit and what sort of a thing is called as electric current right right so now in this act in this part or else in this activity you are given with an activity first and foremost right so in this activity we'll be discussing right in this activity we'll be discussing what is called as a circuit how to define a circuit okay so here you are given with the activity action of a circuit action of a circuit okay so you are given with these materials let's see what are the materials in the first step then so con to conduct this activity you will be needing these materials so obviously to provide electricity to whatever the electrical equipment that we are going to use within this activity will be needing tri cells so the first one will be needing some tri cells some tri cells right so to hold these tri you know that this the, if you take these dry cells these dry cells are somewhat difficult to hold i mean like we can't connect wires directly into a dry cell so in that case we can use some holders dry cell holders okay so we can plug in a dry cell in we can plug in a, a dry cell into the holder and then then by that way we can interconnect several dry cells each other and we can you know like we can get the necessary amount of electricity or the necessary amount of current to our circuit okay so sometimes you can use these dry cells by your own like if you have 9 volt dry cells in the market there is a dry cell called 9 volt cells right so these 9 volt cells are easy to connect with circuits it do not have caps like this right can draw and show it to you it's like this it has this kind of a terminal like this so it's easy to connect right with the circuit but however we are using these kind of dry cells if you want you can use um, like 9 volt dry cells as well but you can use any of the dry cells you want here we use dry cells to provide electricity okay then so I'll erase this thing. I'll erase this one. Okay. So let's see what are the other materials we need. So we'll be needing a bulb. Right? Actually, this bulb is called as a torch bulb. This is called as a torch bulb in flashlights. I mean in torches we use these bulbs okay so terminals of a torch bulb is located here this cap 
and here at the bottom you can observe here this one this area at the bottom there is a another terminal these are the two terminals so when you are providing electricity we need to provide for those two terminals okay so we have to connect with these two terminals when you are providing electricity so in the next one to turn on and off the circuit will be needing a switch will be needing a switch to turn on and off the circuit then this is called a bulb holder bulb holder it's because that my dear children if you take this torch bulb it's difficult to connect wires like for the outer covering you can connect a wire for this covering you can connect a wire quite easily but it's difficult to connect a wire for the lower terminal which is located in here so in that case we use this holder thing the bulb holder you can take this bulb and insert it to the holder and you can like rotate it so that it would fix firmly into the holder and this terminal would finally connect with the terminal located below at the terminal uh, located below at the holder then two wires are coming around so we just need to connect those two wires to the circuit so by using a holder we can quite easily connect that bulb to the circuit okay so the bulb holder the next one is connecting wires we'll be needing several connecting wires to complete the circuit connecting wires right then so these are the materials that we need to find when we are conducting this activity right so now let's move on with the method of conducting the activity right so the method so the method is really simple my dear children you just need to connect the hall apparatus or the materials which you provided with according to this given figure you take the switch and connect it with the dry cells like this so here we have used two dry cells right and by using other connecting wires you connect the bulb to the dry cell and to the switch like this okay it's really simple so this is the way of connecting these materials together to build up the instrument or the thing which is given in the figure so you know that obviously this is a circuit right a simple circuit here when you are going to turn on the switch you know that electricity will flow through the connecting wires to the bulb and the bulb will light up right that's how this activity is going to work so it's really easy to conduct this activity what you have to do according to this given figure connect the necessary materials or then connect the materials which you are given with right then turn on and off the circuit and observe what will happen to the bulb okay my dear children then let's write down the method i'll take the slide somewhat up right connect connect given materials connect given materials according to the according to the given figure according to the given figure then turn on slash off turn on or else turn off okay 
So, I will draw that same figure in the board. Refer the figure carefully. Okay. So, here we go then. The dry cells are like this. Then, you know the circuit symbols. You know the circuit symbol for a bulb. It's like this. We use a circle and we cross it. So, this is the circuit symbol for a bulb. If you take, so I'll use the circuit symbol so that you can get a sound knowledge about the circuit symbols also. I'll use the circuit symbol for this given diagram. So, let's draw the circuit symbol then. Dry cells are being marked like this. You know the longer terminal is the positive terminal and the shorter one is the negative terminal. That's how we denote a dry cell in a circuit uh, by using a circuit symbol. Longer terminal, short terminal, longer terminal is the plus terminal, shorter one is the minus. Then connecting wires go like this. Then the switch. Circuit symbol for a switch is like this. Then this is my bulb. Ah, now this is our circuit, the entire circuit. The switch, the bulb, dry cells and all the other connecting wires. So here you can see that turning the switch on means here we need to take this this terminal like now this is you know off stage so now if you need to turn it on you have to connect this thing like this so check my dear children about the socket given in here now the switch is in on stage if the switch is turned on, you can see the, you can see that the entire system within the socket is entirely a closed one. There is no entrance. I mean, like you can't enter anything at the middle or between the mid, uh, between these items. This entire system is enclosed properly. See, there are, there are no any gaps. These are the dry cells, no. So there are no any gaps in this system. If you turn, if you are going to turn on the switch. So we, instead of turning on, we can say that switch is closed. Okay, switch is closed. See, it's been closed down. Turning on and off can be referred by using closed and open as well then. If the switch has been turned on, we refer the, that thing as, we, if the switch is turned on like this, we refer that thing as the closed stage, closed. Switch is in closed stage, okay? The switch is closed. Now the other case, once again I'll erase this part, right? If the switch is in like this kind of a position, like this, in here, you know that you in between, you can insert anything to here. If you want to connect a bulb, then you can connect another bulb like this. See, it's really simple. Means that to enter or exit a device from the system, okay? Here, actually it's not exit, to enter any kind of an electro electronic device into this system, right? This open place can be used. Means if the switch is in this kind of a situation, if the switch is in this kind of a situation, means here the switch is now in off stage. If the switch is in off stage, we refer that thing as an opened switch. Now here the switch has been opened. So instead of turning on and off, you can use the terms open and close. Okay, right. So I'll erase this thing then to write down the steps. So most of the times you will be given as on and off, but there are some certain situations in some kind of questions, you will be given Close the switch and observe. Open the switch and observe. 
Open in and close in means also turn in on and off. Remember, if the switch is closed, then that means the circuit is in on stage. If the switch is opened, then the circuit is on off stage. Okay, right. So, let's write down the other things. Turn on off or else I'll mention close. If it is on, then it is close. If it is off, then it is open. Right? Turn on and off the switch. And observe the changes. Right? We don't need to write down that thing because just observe is enough. So, this is the way of doing the experiment. What's the method? We just need to connect the given materials according to the figure given like this. Then you have to turn on and off or open or close the switch and we need to observe what's going to happen to our electric bulb. Okay. So, let's move on to the lab and we'll conduct this experiment and we'll write down our observations and conclusions. Right, my dear children. So, now in this activity, we are checking what are the things or what kind of a thing is called a circuit, right? So, here I'm going to build up a small bit of a circuit by using these dry cells. I have arranged these dry, dry cells into a holder like this, a dry cell hold, holder. And I have used two dry cells in here to provide a good current, right? And I have a switch, I have a switch, right? And some connecting wires with crocodile clips. So see, these crocodile clips are uh, helpful to attach the wires into the relevant um, materials. It can be a switch or else a dry cell. So let's connect this circuit and we'll see what kind of a thing is called a circuit and how does a circuit is going to operate, right? So first of all, I'm going to take the bulb. So this is called as a torch bulb, right? This one is called a torch bulb, right? So, and this is the one which is called as the holder, right? So you can just take the bulb and rotate it like this way. And it will get fit onto the holder like this. You don't want to uh, keep the bulb steady with the wires. Otherwise, we have to hold it now. So when you use a hole, when you are using a holder, you just need to connect the bulb into the holder, and we can connect the crocodile clips onto these two points. So now I'm going to connect these things like this, and the other wire. To this one. I'm going to place it over here. Then I'm going to connect one crocodile clip which is coming through the bulb to this battery, one terminal of the battery and the other terminal to this switch. Right? Then the next wire to the positive terminal of the dry cell and other one to the next end of the switch. Now I'm going to turn on the switch and let's see what happens when I'm going to turn on the switch. So this is the switch. I have a handle in here. I can move this handle to here and there. If I'm going to move the handle to that position, then the circuit is closed, right? Now, in this situation, the circuit is opened. So now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to close the circuit and let's see what happens. So you can see that when I'm going to close the circuit, closing means I'm going to connect all the wires and all the conductors together so that the system is enclosed. 
there are no any open ends in here see the wire which is running from the positive terminal of the dry cell goes through here and comes to here and traveling through this terminal of the switch and to the other terminal and through these wires once again through the bulb it comes back to the home means the to the negative terminal so this is a one closed system there are no any openings in here so if i'm going to open the circuit like this then uh, there is no uh, bulb will not light up or there is no brightness in the bulb you can clearly observe it so when i'm going to close it once again you can observe the bulb is going to light up so a circuit is a simple apparatus which can be used to flow electrical charges by using an electric source like a dry cell or else a battery so this is a simple closed system which can be used to flow electric chargers to operate a certain electric appliance like a bulb right so if you connect a motor to this thing the motor will rotate right so this is this kind of a simple apparatus a closed system that allows to flow electrical chargers electric chargers is referred as a circuit right these things which are being connected to the circuit each of the appliances which are connected to the circuit are called as electric appliances this is the electric source the dry cell that's the one which provides electric chargers to the circuit right and we use these connecting wires switches holders and bulbs to enclose the circuit and to allow to flow electric chargers so once again a circuit is a simple system a closed system that flow or that carry electrical charges right my dear children then we conducted the activity and you could observe that when i'm turning on and turning off the switch the electric bulb or the torch bulb which you are provided with is going to light up so it's really simple you know that if you connect any kind of an electric equipment to dry cells by using connecting wires the electric equipment will work it will operate if it is a motor it will rotate if it is a bulb it will light up right if it is a heater then it will provide heat energy so why does now why, why what is the reason for the operation of these electrical equipments it's because of the electrical charges which is coming from the dry cells right are going to flow through the electrical equipment and once again come back to home where which they left from means the dry cells home is dry cell no for electrical chargers if you take if you take electrical chargers their home is the dry cell their source is the dry cell so the electrical from whatever the terminal which the electrical charges are going to move once again they will travel and come back to the not to the same terminal but to the opposite terminal of it that's how these charges are going to behave i mean that's how these charges are going to flow right so when you're turning on and off in the earlier case i told you that when you are closing or opening the circuit the light bulb will work or it will light up or it will not light up so my dear children in the earlier case also i told you that this circuit means a closed system a closed system that allows to flow electrical charges right so it means simply a so so circuit means simply a system that allows to flow or that carries electrical charges from one terminal to another terminal in a circuit right if you take a circuit it has a terminal which is going to emit charges and it has another terminal which is going to collect the charges so 
within a circuit from a terminal charges flow to the other terminal through a closed system. In order to flow the electrical charges, the entire system should be interconnected. It shouldn't be interfered with, uh, interfered, I mean like it shouldn't have any gaps. If it, ha if it has gaps, then the electrical charges will not flow. So it should be an entirely closed system. So we'll write down our observation. When the switch is closed, closed means you know on. The light bulb, the light bulb or the bulb lights up. The bulb lights up. So when the switch is closed or when the circuit is turned on, the bulb lights up. Next one. When the switch is opened, means the circuit is in now off stage means the system is now open the circuit is now open so when the switch is opened bulb will not light bulb will not light right so this is our observation simply when you are turning on the switch or when you are closing the system when you are closing the system right means that when you are turning on the circuit the bulb is going to light up or the bulb is going to operate when you are going to turn off the circuit means when you are going to open this system or the circuit or the switch right then in that case the bulb will not light up okay so what is our conclusion from this activity then here we have studied what do you mean by a circuit then so circuit is a closed system that flow electrical charges right so conclusion is here we can say that only when the system is closed the bulb is going to light up this system should be a closed system only when it is closed only when it is closed the bulb is going to light up so we can say that when the system I'll mention circuit also when the system or the circuit when when the system when the system or the circuit is closed the bulb lights up the bulb lights up okay only when the system is closed the bulb lights up that's our conclusion means that we can say that circuit is a closed system circuit is a closed system or else it is a closed setup right so this is our final observation from the activity then so here we have studied about what do you mean by an electric circuit so it is a closed system which can carry 
electrical charges from one place to another or else from one terminal to another terminal right right so this is our activity then so let's move on with the next slide to observe what are the things contained in the electrical circuits and electrical current right okay so let's see then electrical circuit electrical current okay so we are going to discuss what do you mean by an electric current and what do you mean by an electric circuit so first of all we will mention what is an electric current after doing electric current i will write down what do you mean by a circuit so electric current is simply flow of electrical charges current means a flow i think you have heard about this term what water currents what do you mean by water current water current means it's a stream of water which is flowing from one place to another so like that way simply a current means any kind of a thing which is flowing from one place to another so here electric current means flow of electrical charges from one place to another place or else from one terminal to another terminal right the flow of electrical charges from one terminal to another terminal through an electric source or through a circuit right okay so here we can say that electric current means flow of electrical charges it's a flow of electrical charges in very simple so we'll write down what do you mean by an electric current it is the so i'll use a different color pen it is the flow of electrical charges it is the flow of electrical charges from one terminal from one terminal to another so in the so at the so later on we'll be discussing what are these two terminals right if you take any kind of an electric source so you already know that if you take an electric source the two terminals are positive terminal and the negative terminal right so we'll be discussing to which kind of a direction does the electrical charges or this electric current is going to flow right so we'll be discussing those things later on with the lesson right for just now i'll mention the terminals so what do you mean by an electric current it is the flow of electrical charges from one terminal to another terminal right not terminals should be terminal okay because there are only two terminals from one terminal to another that's it there are no any three or four terminals in a dry cell okay right so it is the flow of electrical charges from one terminal to another terminal right now let's move on with the circuit so circuit is a special closed system that flow what these electrical charges so it is a closed system or else a closed unit that allows to flow electrical charges right you know that we connect different types of electrical equipments to the circuit but however the entire system should be a closed one there shouldn't be any openings right in the earlier activity also we discussed that if you turn on the switch i mean like when you close it when you close the system only that case the bulb is going to light up 
if it is being opened, if the switch is in off stage, then in that case the bulb will not light up. So here we can write electric circuit. It is a closed, remember the term closed system that flow electrical charges, electric charges So, it is a closed system that flow electric charges. This is called as a circuit. So, electric charges, flow of electric charges is also mentioned as current, electric current. So, a closed system that flow electric charges or electric current is referred as a circuit, right? So, this is the definition for a circuit and this is what do you mean? by the electric current right so electric current means basically a flow of electrical charges from one terminal to another terminal right my dear children so i hope that you got a sound knowledge about these electrical charges and about the electrical circuits okay then so here we are going to examine about the flow of electric current through a conductor what is called as a conductor conductor means any material that can pass electricity through it you know that if you take a metal any kind of a metal is going to pass electricity through the material or through the metal so therefore if you take a metal, metals are referred as conductors, electrical conductors, right? Other than metals, are there any material which can conduct electricity? Of course, there is. If you take carbon, you know that if you cut a piece of a dry cell, when you take, when, if you take a dry cell and cut it to two pieces separately, the rod which is located at the middle is a carbon rod. So, carbon can conduct electricity. So, that is the only non-metal which can conduct electricity. Normally, each and every metal is an electrical conductor. And there is a non-metallic conductor as well, carbon, right? Okay then, so here, we will be discussing about flow of electricity through a, or flow of electric current through a conductor. So, here we are going to conduct an activity also to examine the flow of electric current. So, you will be needing these materials once again. We will be needing to provide electricity dry cells. Once again, you will be needing a switch. Switch. Then, a motor. Right? You will be needing motor i'll you know this thing okay so dry cells switch motor then you know these things like in the earlier case to connect these together we'll be needing connecting wires connecting wires so, dry cell, switch, motor and connecting wires. These are the materials that we need. Okay. So, let us see how to conduct this activity. So, the method. See, it is a really simple figure. Here, you have to connect the given materials according to the given figure. Right. It is really simple. According to the given figure, like in the earlier case, we have to prepare the circuit or this system. And then we have to turn on and off the switch, means that open or close the circuit. 
and to observe it's going to happen right okay so we'll write down the ways and we will see right like what are the observations that we can take okay right so we'll write it down connect connect the materials according to the given figure right according to the given figure we have to connect the materials which are given okay here we are going to find out or investigate how does the electrical charges or how electrical current is going to flow through a circuit my dear children okay so in the next step turn on the switch turn on the switch and observe the direction observe the direction turn on the switch and observe the direction of rotation So you know that this is a motor no? so when you connect this according to the given figure and when you turn on the switch electrical charges will move through the motor or it will flow through the motor and due to that charges you know that the motor is going to rotate and we have to identify to which direction this the motor is going to rotate okay that's our main that's that's the main observation in this activity right so we are identifying like to which kind of a direction does the electrical charges are going to flow okay so here in case in that case we need to identify the direction of the rotation of the motor because we'll assume that electrical charges are coming from this terminal so like this way it's going it's going and through the motor it's going like this through the motor it's going going like this so like this the first part so here it will come and go like this and comes back home so the direction of rotation would be like this it will show a clockwise rotation if the charges are coming from this way around and travel into the other right here we need to identify if there are any kind of a certain direction when electrical charges are traveling from one place to another through a, through and through a circuit okay so here turn on the switch and observe the direction of rotation in the motor of the motor okay so you have to turn it on and observe the direction then i told you that in the earlier case if the electrical charges are going around like this way then the motor will show a clockwise rotation according to this figure but what have what 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 happens if the charges are coming from this terminal then it will travel like this and it will rotate to the other side then it will rotate to the other side so to confirm that thing what we have to do is we have to interchange the two terminals of the motor we have to interchange the two terminals of the motor okay 
right so in the next step what do you have to do interchange the two terminals of the motor and see what will happen to the direction of rotation okay so now what we are going to do is we are going to interchange the terminals of the motor right so in the next step interchange interchange the terminals of the motor and observe the direction of rotation right so my dear children if the charges are always flowing to a one direct on one, only to a one certain direction so when you are interchanging the two terminals the motor should rotate to the opposite direction right motor should rotate to the opposite direction okay so this is the way of conducting our experiment so first of all you have to connect the system according to the given figure okay then after that what you have to do we have to turn on the switch and observe the direction of the rotation of the motor right then after that we have to interchange the two terminals of the motor then after that identify or observe the direction of rotation in it if the current is flowing only to a one certain direction definitely the motor will rotate to other direction or to the opposite direction in the first activity like in the first rotation we have to uh, like in the first rotation if it is going if it is the if the direction of current flow is to a constant direction then definitely the rotation direction of the motor should change it should definitely change right so this is the way of doing the activity my dear children so we'll head on to the lab and let's see whether we can get these expected observations right my dear children now in this activity let's observe is there a certain way is there a certain direction or else is there a certain way when traveling these electrical charges right now with in this activity we are going to observe whether the electric charges have a certain direction of traveling right so to observe this thing i'm going to use a simple motor and here you can observe i have connected a simple fan right and one plate of the fan is uh, shown is drawn with an arrow so that you can identify the direction of traveling quite well right you can clearly identify the direction of traveling or the direction of rotation very well right and once again i have some dry cells connected to holders and a switch some connecting wires so these are the materials which i need now i'm going to connect this circuit right i'm going to connect this circuit and let's see what happens or is there any certain direction when traveling these electrical charges right so i'm going to take a connecting wire first connect to the one end of the dry cell like this the other end to the switch and the motor 
So I'm going to take one end of the motor and connect by using wires to the other end of the switch, right? Then the other connecting wire to the other end of the motor and way back home once again to the other terminal of the dry cell. Now here you can observe I have used this red color end at my left hand side and the black color end at my right hand side. You can clearly observe it. So now when I'm going to turn on the when I'm going to turn on the switch or when I'm going to enclose the circuit observe to which direction does this arrowhead moves okay observe to which direction does this arrowhead moves simply to which direction does the fan is going to move when I'm going to enclose the circuit okay now let's enclose the circuit and we'll see to which direction does the motor is going to move right observe clearly So you can see that to the direction of the arrowhead, to the direction of the arrowhead means for this direction. So once again, check my dear children. So when I'm going to turn on the switch or else when I'm going to enclose the switch, the fan of the motor will rotate to the direction of the arrowhead. So in that case, the black color end is connected with the positive terminal of the dry cell and the red color terminal is connected with the negative terminal. So let's observe once again. See, it's rotating towards the direction of the arrowhead. Right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to inter interchange the two terminals. Means that I'm going to change this one means I'm going to change the positive terminal to negative one and negative to the positive. So in the earlier case, the negative terminal was the red color one. Now I'm going to use black color one as the negative terminal and red color one as the positive terminal like this. Now let's see to which direction does the motor is going to rotate when I'm going to interchange the two terminals, right? So let's see now, observe the direction quite well. See, now in this case, the motor or the fan is rotating opposite direction of the arrowhead. It moves in opposite direction to the arrowhead. See? So we can see that when I'm going to interchange the two terminals, the rotation direction of the motor is going to change also. The reason behind for this scenario is when I'm going to interchange the two terminals in a circuit, the direction of the current flow is going to change. Direction of the current flow is going to change. Normally, we assume that conventionally, the electrical charges or electric current is going to flow from positive terminal to the negative terminal in an electric source. Always in a normal electric source, conventionally, the charges or the electric current flows from positive terminal to the negative terminal. So when I'm going to interchange the two terminals, the current flow in direction also interchange. So that's why the motor will rotate to the other side when I'm going to interchange, interchange the two terminals. So it is obvious to us that in this experiment, 
there is a certain way, there is a conventional way in flowing electrical charges in an electric circuit. So in an electric circuit, we can say that the, there is a certain direction of traveling, right? So let's see to which kind of a direction does the electric charges travel or the current is going to travel, right? So we'll continue with another experiment later to observe that direction. Right, my dear Hirlan. So we conducted the activity and you could observe that the motor is going to change its direction of rotation when you are interchanging the two terminals of the dry cell right when you are changing the two terminals of the dry cell the rotation direction of the motor is also going to change it's because that there is one certain way or there is one certain direction which the electrical charges are going to flow right there is only one certain direction so when you are changing that direction the direction of rotation is also going to change. So, we'll write down the observation. So, in the first step, connecting the motor to the circuit. First step is connecting, connect the motor and Turn on the switch. Connect the motor and turn on the switch. This is the first step. This is the step of the activity. So connect the motor and turn on the switch. So what are our observations then? So our observations are quite simple. Yes, only one certain observation. That observation is motor is rotate into a direction. We'll say to adjust direction, right? Motor is rotating into a direction. We observed that thing at the lab also. So motor is rotating to a direction. Motor is rotating to a direction. motor is rotating into a direction. See the next column. Observations after changing terminals of cells. So we have to write down the observation after changing the terminals of the cell. So after changing the terminals of the cell, you could observe that the direction of rotation of the motor also going to change or oh, it's rotate it will rotate to the opposite direction the motor will rotate to the opposite direction in the second when you are interchanging the terminals of the dry cells so here we can write it like this motor is rotating to opposite direction motor is rotating rotating to opposite direction motor is rotating to opposite direction motor is rotating to opposite direction so here we can say that motor is rotating to opposite direction motor is rotating to opposite direction right so this is our observation from the activity right my dear children so you are given with two points check the two points what happens when terminals of the cells are changed so we wrote it down motor is rotating to opposite direction what can be concluded according to your observations what is our conclusion then there is one certain direction of current flow. Current is always going to flow to a one certain direction. And we discussed when doing the activity 
current is always flowing from positive terminal to negative terminal in an electric source like dry cells. Current is always flowing or the electrical charges are always flowing from positive terminal to negative terminal. So when you are interchanging the two terminals, the direction of the current interchanges. So thereby the rotation of rotation direction of the motor is also going to interchange. Right? So what can be concluded according to our observation? So our final conclusion is there is one certain direction of current flow through a socket or else current always flow to a constant direction in a circuit. So we will write it down. Current is flowing to a constant direction current is flowing to a constant direction in a circuit. So I will mention the direction as well. So we discussed earlier that current is always going to flow from positive terminal towards the negative terminal. So from positive terminal to negative. Actually by the rotation of motor we can conclude but to a certain extent to get a more accurate observation we'll be using an instrument okay so when you are going when we are discussing this lesson further you will get to know that instrument and will be conducting that activity as well to see whether the whether our conclusion which took from this activity is actually true or not okay we can even give out a more sufficient proof right in proving this direction of current flow by using that instrument so we'll discuss those things later on with the lesson okay so up to now we can conclude up to a certain extent that the electrical charges is flow into a constant direction and up to a certain extent we can say that from positive terminal to negative terminal it's going to flow okay by providing a more good by providing a more sufficient proof we can like we uh, by providing a more sufficient proof we can say that this is okay and this is going to flow from that positive to negative terminal. So we will use a different instrument in doing that thing in the later in the, uh, when we are discussing later things in the lesson right now. So we will move on with the next slide to observe what are the other things. So here once again you are given with the conclusion see the direction of the current flow changes when the terminal of the cells are changed when the terminals are going to change the current flow is going to change right so the reason for change of rotational direction of the motor is the change of direction of current so motor is changing right the direction of the the rotation of the rotor the rotation direction of the motor rotation direction of the motor is going to change because of change in the Rot uh, because of change in the direction of current flow in the circuit. So you are given with a box with two points. What are those two points? The two points are really simple. Number one, current is always flowing 
to a one constant direction we up to a certain extent we can say that current is flowing from positive terminal to negative terminal okay so these points are really special my dear children in any kind of an electric source current is flowing from positive terminal to negative terminal and the current flow in direction is always a constant no matter which electric source that you are going to use the current flow in direction current is going to flow to one certain direction that direction is from positive terminal to negative terminal so we'll write it down current flow direction current flow direction is constant current flow direction is constant current is flowing always to a one certain direction right so current flow direction is constant next step it is flowing from positive terminal to terminal to negative terminal so current is always flowing from positive terminal to negative terminal okay so these are the two main important things which we need to identify in the flow of current okay current flow in direction is a constant and it is always flowing from positive terminal to negative terminal okay right then so i told you that to measure the direction actually to get the direction of current flow a simple equipment or else an equipment is being used an instrument is being used so by connecting this instrument to a circuit we can provide a solid proof to the direction of current flow so here my dear children will be discussing about that instrument so check this thing a center zero galvanometer center zero galvanometer center zero means here you can observe see in this galvanometer thing you can observe the zero is in here it is exactly at the middle see it is exactly at the middle of the uh, scale which is on the galvanometer so that's why it is referred as the center zero galvanometer so this indicator at the galvanometer either can rotate to this direction or else to other direction both the to both the directions this galvanometer reading or the indicator will rotate so according to the direction of current flow only to the direction of current flow the indicator will move so if the current is moving to this direction indicator will turn to this direction like this if the if the current is flowing to that direction then like this so this is referred as the galvanometer right here especially this galvanometer is a center zero galvanometer center zero galvanometer then the next one center zero ammeter or milliammeter center zero ammeter or milliammeter 
this ammeter or milliammeter thing is the instrument that we use to measure electric current. Okay. That's the instrument which we use to measure electric current. So when you take this instrument, the center zero ammeter and milliammeter, that instrument can also be used to measure the direction or to get the direction of current flow. Like in the center zero galvanometer, here also you can observe the reading zero, the zero of the reading at the middle of the ammeter or the milliammeter, right? So once again, like in the galvanometer, the reading could move to here or else to the other side. So according to the current flow direction, the indicator will move. So this is center zero, ammeter or milliammeter, right? Milliammeter is used to measure small amounts of current. Ammeter is used to measure large amount of current. We will be discussing those things further when you are going further with the lesson, right? So these are the two main instruments that we can uh, that we can connect to a circuit in order to observe the direction of current flow. By connecting these two, we can get we can give out a solid proof. We can give out a solid proof to show that the current flow in direction is constant. It always flows from positive terminal to negative terminal, right then. So these are the two instruments that we can use to get the direction of a current flow in a circuit. Right, my dear children. So in the next chapter, we'll connect one of these instruments to a circuit. And let's see whether these indicators are going to show the same direction like the direction of like the rotation direction of motor okay so by connecting these to a circuit i am going to give you a solid proof to show that current is flowing towards negative terminal starting from the positive terminal so in the next chapter we'll discuss about uh, that activity right and let's give out a solid proof to show that current is flowing from positive to negative terminal. So I'll meet you on the next chapter and we'll discuss about that activity.